DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. Hit me. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up. Let's get a sports talk. Russell, Sam Jones, and Kareem as the only players to make the finals ten times. The Clippers have the second best odds to win the West. They're plus 160. They're 49 seasons without making it to the finals, uh, directly preceding or even the round before that is the longest in league history. In the East, the Bucks are overwhelming favorites to reach the finals at minus 230. Milwaukee looking to make it for the third time in history, first time since 1974. The Celtics are behind them in the East at plus 500 at 43 and 21. Boston is on pace to post its best winning record since the season that ended in 2011. Uh, looking at a little deeper into it, the defending champion Raptors have the next shortest odds to win the East with the Sixers right behind them. The 10th seed Pelicans have the sixth shortest odds to capture the West of the 13 teams that remain. Remember, they've been a different team since they got Zion Williamson back. We will answer some big questions around the NBA. Wendy's still with us, and Jay Will joins us this morning as well. And so, Jay Will, I'll start with you, and we'll start in Milwaukee. We just mentioned the Bucks are a prohibitive favorite. Second year in a row, they'll be the one seed in the Eastern Conference. Giannis will be going into the final year of his deal when this season comes to an end. So what would you say is at stake for them and for him if it doesn't go well in these playoffs? Well, I mean, he's in his seventh season with the Milwaukee Bucks. And it, just to give context to fans, you know, after LeBron James spent seven se seasons in Cleveland after not winning a championship, that is when he decided to leave for Miami. I, I do not see Giannis leaving Milwaukee, even if they were to lose. That's just my personal opinion on this. Obviously, a lot of things can change. I think the relationship that he has with Mark Lazary, uh, John Horse, who is the GM, I think is a very special relationship. He seems more more like a small-town market individual. Doesn't seem to be loomed away uh, to the big cities by the lights. And I, I think, if anything, this pandemic has kind of showed him uh, the power of a smaller market and some of the things he can do. But uh, there's a lot of time left to be told, and, and we'll get a chance to watch with the front row seat. Well, Wendy, he mentioned the pandemic, and that could have another impact on how this plays out. What's that? Yeah, so the reason that the Supermax was even put into the NBA was for this exact reason, to offer superstars so much money that they don't want to leave. It's had mixed success. It's Milwaukee's for the taking. Is theirs for the, the shut up. If they don't get there, you don't know what go through a, a superstar mind or what he's want to do. Milwaukee in the same position to get to the finals. It's put up a shut up for them. Two years in a row that you have a, a one of the best records in the NBA. And you have a solid team around Giannis to be able to win a championship. Ain't no way you should not be coming out of the East. If they don't come out of the East this season, I don't know what he's going to do. But he loved being in Milwaukee. He loved being in that small market. He loved being the face of the Bucks. It's his team, but... A guy going to want to win a championship. It's theirs. If they go to grab it, or let's sit to their hands again. There's a team that's a highly favorite to go to the finals. Yes. The problem, however, is we don't know what the salary cap is going to look like next year. And even if the Bucks went 16-0 through the playoffs, if the salary cap collapses, it may not make economic sense for Giannis to extend. And this could even also apply to the Lakers and Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis could be smiling from ear to ear, so happy to be in L.A., but it may not behoove him to sign a long-term contract this summer. So the results on the floor obviously matter. But the negotiations with the CBA and what happens with the salary cap may matter more about whether these guys re-sign this summer. And to be clear, that would mean that Giannis would play into the last year of his contract, and then, you know, all bets are off. You never know when things like that happen. Here's the next one. Let's talk about the 76ers. Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons basically are the process. And, and, you know, Jay Will, you and I have talked a lot over the course of the time that you've been with me here on this show about that team and how it's just never quite fit together perfectly. So if this thing should get cut short a
abruptly in this postseason. Wendy, I'll start this one with you. What's at stake there? What happens then? This is one of the things that people and executives have been talking about for nine months now, long before we knew what COVID-19 was. And the feeling is that with talent like this, you try everything you possibly can before breaking them up. So if they do not have a strong postseason, I think... Ben Simmons and B, they need shooters around them. They struggle from the perimeter as a shooting team. They don't have any three-point shooters around them. They trying to become that team that have surround them with three-point shooters. That's what, because Ben Simmons don't take shots. And he need the guys to be on the outside so he can kick it out to them. And open everything up for Ben Simmons and Embiid. But they don't have them. They don't have those type of shooters. And they don't have a closer. They, that's why they were struggling as well. Because Ben, um, Jimmy Butler was their closer, and they don't have him. And they were trying to figure that out, who's going to close out the game for them and surround them with shooters. And they don't have them. And that's that's why this team was up and down this year because they're trying to figure out who could close the games, who could be outside shooting, and they still haven't figured that out. And it's up to Ben, Tim, uh, ben Simmons to be able to take more shots, and he don't want to take more shots. So it's clogging up the lane for him and B. And B take more shots than Ben Simmons. And that's what elevate the Sixers if Ben Simmons take more shots than he had. Brett Brown's job would be on the line first before they would consider breaking these guys up. But one more thing I got to say about the money. The 76ers are scheduled to have a $145 million payroll next year. That was based on things staying the same. If the salary cap collapses, they may have to cut salary and break up the team anyway. So much of this is going to hinge on these negotiations. Let's try to put that piece to the side. It's important, no question. But just looking at it from a basketball perspective, Jay Williams, if you were making the decisions in Philadelphia and this thing were to get cut short in this playoff run here, would you be considering, I forget considering, would you be thinking, I need to break these two guys up? I, I would try to do, that would be my last resort. But if I got to my last resort and I've been on our show talking about this, Greeny, last year, I would build my team around Ben Simmons. Now, I, I know Joel and On Wednesday, not going to break them up because it was a long process. And now they got here and became one of the top teams in the East with those two. They ain't going to break them up so quickly. They're going to try to figure out a way to finesse it to be able to keep those two together and build a, a, a good team around them so they can be able to go deep in the playoffs. They ain't going to give up on them so quickly because they helped the Sixers get back to the, to the top. And they don't want to go back to the bottom and – had to start all over again and start a new process. They don't want to do that. Bede is a very special talent, and there's no doubt that talent-wise, he's one of the best there is in the league. The question for Joel Embiid is about health. I know Ben Simmons is coming off an injury, and now his health is in question to a degree too, but there's been a scope of work as it relates to health injuries uh, for Joel Embiid, and I think that's the main question. Can he remain healthy, and is that sustainable for the next 10 years of a franchise where I, I have a guy like Ben Simmons who you know, the way he can get people involved in the game, the pace in which he can play at the game, his defensive prowl, uh, which is something that is incredible. I think he's the upper defensive player of the year this year in the league. And that's the only thing that's holding and be back is health issues. That's the real reason they is not going to let him go so easily. They're going to try to maintain and be able to work something out to be able to let him get healthy. But he just needed to stay on the court for the sisters to be successful. Those two guys had to be on the floor for the sisters to even contend for a title. Ben Sisters come off a back injury. And B just been again hurt mostly every season. And they need him to be fully healthy, but sometimes you gotta hold your breath. Every time you see him 
either hit his hand and he looked down at it or he come down on his foot and you got to make sure is he hurt and you see he um this go uh can his finger it's just durability like can he stay healthy and he just been hurt more than Ben Simmons I will build my team around Ben Simmons if you're asking me. If it comes down to that, I will go with Ben. If Ben Simmons is a better player without Joel Embiid on his team, it's not a disrespect to Embiid, but based upon the way they both play, Jay Will, is, is Simmons better without Embiid? I, I, it just opens up the floor. It opens up the floor for the pace that uh, this team, it looks like at times, should be playing at. You know, Joel Embiid at times, you know, his game is centered down low on the block. I know he has the ability to shoot. Those numbers have gotten a little bit better over the course of his career. But, you know, as every when you watch basketball, you don't want to see Joel Embiid lagging in the system in order for him to come down and shoot threes. And somebody could say, well, in playoff basketball, the game slows down. But the metrics actually don't prove that. The game is almost at the same speed that they are during the regular season. So if that is a pace and space style of game, I go with Ben Simmons. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube.